So today we're going to talk about the Sony FX6 and firmware 2.0. There's a lot of features to get into, so with all that out of the way, let's get started. So one month after I published the FX6 review video, Sony released firmware 2.0 for the camera. And much of my criticism has been addressed with this firmware update, specifically with the implementation of the touch tracking autofocus feature. Additionally, this firmware update includes bokeh control, picture cache recording, four channel audio metering, and 16-bit HDMI raw recording. Now to really get the ball rolling, I do want to start with touch tracking autofocus. So I was on a safari not too long ago, and I was filming wildlife with the FX6 using touch tracking autofocus, and I was using it in tandem with clear image zoom. And the reason I want to note that is because prior to this firmware update, clear image zoom only let you film using manual focus. So now you can use clear image zoom. You can have that one point up to a 1.5 times punch in along with touch tracking autofocus. So we're out here filming wildlife and I'm using the FX6 along with the 100 to 400 and the old trusty 28 to 135 f4 power zoom. So far, so good. The touch tracking has been really, really useful on this trip, as you could probably imagine. And I've seen, for the most part, pretty consistent results. There's one, in, there was an error here or there, especially when it was tracking baboons or monkeys that run very quickly. However, the touch tracking, along with the clear image zoom and that 1.5 time punching you can do, has been probably my favorite combination. So overall, I found the experience to be very positive as I sort of expected with the a7S III and how the touch tracking system works on that camera. It works just as well on the FX6. And if you were to ask me to be really picky to find a flaw in this system, I would say maybe 5% of the time, the touch tracking wasn't sticking to subjects like I would have liked. Overall, the system works very well. Now, another handy feature is picture cache recording that allows you to record footage before you hit the record button. And this really comes in handy in things like events, sports, and of course, wildlife. There were many times where I was in a scenario that I had limited memory and an animal was relaxing or not really doing anything and I wanted a shot, but I had to wait for the animal to get up. But sometimes if you turn away or you're not really paying attention, you can miss it because it can happen in the blink of an eye. So I was able to set picture cache recording up and actually, I was able to secure a few shots I wouldn't have normally because of this feature. And it's very easy to use. You simply go in the menu system and you pick between the four options of what you think works best. Generally, I like to use 20 seconds just because it allows me to have sufficient time from when I press record to really contextualize the action. Focus breathing compensation corrects for focus breathing or pulsing when using a lens in a video context. And there are many G Master lenses that have really terrible focus breathing. So now, Using a lot of these G Master lenses, that is on the table for video. And the way focus breathing compensation works is it takes about a 10% or so crop on your image and it eliminates focus breathing. So there's a lens I'm thinking of, the 50 millimeter f1.2. I've used it for photographs before and I would love to use that for video. But the focus breathing issue was very problematic. This is an example of a lens that maybe wouldn't be great for video before, but now it's totally usable on the FX6. The next feature really broadens the usability of the FX6 in my view, and that is the inclusion of 16-bit RAW HDMI recording. Now with this firmware update, you can film in 4K and up to 60p RAW. However, if you want to film in 4K 120p RAW, you will still have to use the SDI port. So there are additional features on firmware 2.0 like bokeh control and four channel audio metering, but I won't get into those features in this video because I really wanted to focus on a set of core features I feel enhance and augment the FX6 the most. And I find that I wouldn't have been able to get a lot of the shots I was able to record without this firmware version. As a matter of fact, if I was stuck 
with the previous iteration of the FX6 firmware where there was no picture cache recording or touch tracking autofocus, I would have had a much harder time. With touch tracking autofocus, especially in tandem with clear image zoom and that 1.5 punch in, really helped me to get a lot of shots. So overall firmware 2.0 really impressed me. As a Sony user, I find that it exceeded my expectations. Just touch tracking autofocus would have been enough, but with picture cache recording and the 16-bit HDMI RAW recording, I find that this camera has increased its profile, at least in my mind. So anyway, that's all for now. And as always, if you found this video helpful or insightful, give a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, comment below, let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next one.